Hello, this is Alex on Pangyo Techno Valley Weekly News. Here's the news from the third week of August. Naver and Kakao once again fight over the coin market. While the two big tech giants in Korea, Naver and Kakao, continue to compete, there are observations that the two companies can form a competitive structure in the cryptocurrency market. Previously, the Bank of Korea had signed a research contract for a central bank digital currency, CBDC, simulation with GroundX, a blockchain subsidiary of Kakao, which issues Clayton. In the meantime, Link, unlike Clayton, has not been listed on the Korean cryptocurrency market. Since Link is only listed in overseas cryptocurrency markets like Bitfront, Korean investors had to go through complicated procedures to make investments. Clayton is currently listed on BitThumb, Coin1, and Corbit. But as it listed on BitThumb from August 13th, more Korean investors are expected to make investments with it. However, since BitThumb is only listed on the BTC market, investors cannot purchase directly with KRW. They have to go through the procedure of purchasing a link with the Bitcoin they have purchased. Lion Blockchain announced its business plan for 2021 at the end of April and announced that it would increase liquidity and expand Link users by additionally listing Link on other exchange markets. After that, it selected BitThumb of Korea as its first exchange market. Up next, Yellowknife and Fitrix sign MOU to develop mobility based on external biometric information. Yellowknife signed a business agreement with Fitrix, a healthcare startup specializing in biometric information measurement for developing mobility services using external biometric information. The mobility startup Yellowknife is a company in the Pangyo startup zone established by the Ministry of SMEs and Startups and operated by Korea Institute of Startups and Entrepreneurship Development and the Gyeonggi Center for Creative Economy and Innovation. It is developing the Veloga Auto Service, a service that allows users to directly customize the vehicle dashboard UI by connecting to a smartphone app. Recently, the company successfully completed POC or proof of concept to the Veloga Auto Service for Kia Motors Vehicle Carnival. Fitrix is an image recognition based healthcare solution startup. It is operating an out body measurement service that recognizes users' biometric information with a smart mirror and analyzes it with AI to provide a customized fitness solution to users. Through this agreement, Yellowknife will solve bio problems that may occur while driving based on the body information of occupants previously measured with the Fitrix service. It is developing content to induce safe driving and reduce fatigue caused by long term driving such as suggesting posture corrections and stretching methods. For the next story, what is Nexon's Metaverse Challenge Project MOD? Nexon declared to enter the Metaverse field with its new project, Project MOD, which it released on August 5th. It is a content-making platform that is being developed with the goal of creating a next-generation playground. Project MOD is designed so that anyone can freely create and play content. Users can create various contents by adding MapleStory assets and also resources they have created themselves. Through this, Nexon aims to create a metaverse ecosystem where space is connected with reality beyond the virtual world in Project MOD. The biggest feature of Project MOD is that it provides a vast amount of graphic resources of Nexon's popular intellectual property, MapleStory, for free in its platform. In addition to that, it introduces a creative environment with a high degree of freedom in which user-generated content, UGC, can be freely added. By combining MapleStory IP with images and sounds created by creators, users can create games, social spaces, and lifestyle content. In order to lower the barriers to creation, it also worked hard on an intuitive production environment. Even without programming knowledge, anyone can easily create content using the production tool called MOD Maker. If programming is used, it can be designed with more detail. The content created can be sold directly by the creator with the business model attached. 
Nexon plans to provide related systems so that economic activities between the users can take place in the project MOD platform. For the final big story, NCSoft publishes the first ESG report in the game industry. On August 12th, NCSoft published NCSoft ESG Playbook 2020, a sustainability report containing the vision and performance of ESG, environmental, social, and governance management, for the first time as a Korean game company. NC created a separate page on sustainability management on its official website and released a report containing its management vision and detailed activities. NC is developing its sustainability management by focusing on the following. Healthy organizational culture and unbiased fun to embrace social diversity both inside and outside the content. Reliable global service environment for establishing a global security system. Technological development and ethical values for developing human-centered AI technologies. And giving opportunities for future generations that contain the activities for socially disenfranchised or disadvantaged people. NCSoft ESG Management Chairman Yoon Song Yi said, as we planned to publish the first sustainable management report, we thought and prepared what NC, a technology R&D company, could truly put into practice. We're going to embrace social diversity throughout the contents and put effort to fulfill the social responsibilities of the corporations required in the digital era. That's it for your main news of the week. Here's a quick rundown of the news that remains. First up, MFDS says 93 subjects to test SK bio vaccine in Korea is statistically sufficient. The Ministry of Food and Drug Safety said on August 12th that the number of Korean subjects set at 93 among the 3,990 subjects for multinational phase three trial of SK Biosciences COVID-19 vaccine, GBP510, is statistically sufficient to confirm the immunogenicity of Koreans. Next up, GBSA holds non-face-to-face -face kickoff ceremony for GBSA supporters. Gyeonggi-do Business and Science Accelerator posted on its social media on August 10th that it held a non-face-to-face -face kickoff ceremony for GBSA supporters for promoting excellent small and medium-sized enterprises in the province. Our third quick story, Kakao surrenders and withdraws taxi bicycle fare increase plan. Kakao has decided to withdraw its plan to increase fares for taxis and shared bicycles. Kakao has decided to withdraw its plan to increase fares for taxis and shared bicycles. It is speculated that Kakao withdrew as criticism for forceful increase of service fees by having the upper hand in the mobility market arose. That's it for your Pongo Techno Valley Weekly News of the Week. I'm Alex Sigrist, and I will see you next time.